I titled this message this morning, Blessed to Bless. Blessed to Bless. You put it up there? Yes. What does that mean? Well, it's like having something to give to something, someone else. In Acts chapter 20, verse 35, the writer repeats a saying and a truth from our Savior Jesus Christ that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Being saved is being blessed. Being saved is giving back. Being saved is being grateful. To be saved is the greatest blessing in life. Nothing is greater other than seeing another person get saved. Being saved and seeing others saved is the greatest gift there is. How many believe that? Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 12, teaches us the attitude of a Christian. And that we're blessed regardless of our circumstances. How many know that regardless of what situation you're facing right now, whether it be legal financial, family issues, health issues, whatever, amen, you are still blessed regardless of your circumstances. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word breath, blessed in the Greek is pronounced makarios, which means to receive God's provisions. It means to be fortunate and to have favor. It means to be made holy, to be consecrated, to be honored, to have good fortune. To be blessed is the inner quality of a faithful servant of God. We have something that separates us and marks us as a child of God, and that is that we are blessed and favored. 1 Peter 1.16 says, be ye holy, for I am holy. This scripture says God is holy, so we are to be holy. To be blessed is to be made holy. So this scripture can be interpreted as be blessed, for I am blessed. Or to be blessed to bless. We are blessed, so let's be a blessing. 2 Kings chapter 7 talks about four lepers sitting outside the city wall. Basically, they were under the sentence of death because there was no cure for their disease. And there was a famine in the city, so if they went in there, there was no food. And the enemy was mounting an attack upon the city. And one of the lepers said, if we sit here, we die. But if we go on the city, we're going to die anyway. Let's go to the enemy's camp. They may save us, but if they don't, we're going to die anyway. So they went toward the enemy's camp, and as they went to, toward the enemy's camp and they got there, it was empty. Why was it empty? Because God made a noise. God scared off the enemy, so he left. And they left all the food, all the gold, all the clothes, all the horses there. So the lepers ran and went into the tent, 
took everything and started burying it. And one of them said, wait a minute, let's stop. If something bad is going to happen to us again, we have this good fortune. Something good has happened to me. I, I, I was expecting to die, but somebody gave me life. So I'm going to go tell the other people that are in the city, that are in the famine, that have nothing to eat, that I got food here to eat, that I got provisions here. Why? Because they were blessed. They went and been. A, they went and was a blessing. Freely you have received, freely give. Give back what God has given you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your family. God wants to bless your future. He wants to bless you spiritually. He's a gift giver. He wants to bless you physically. He's a healer. He wants to bless you financially. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He wants to bless you relationally. We are the family of God. The blessing of God is contagious. It goes from place to place. It'll go from West Covina to San Gabriel Valley to the state of California, throughout the nation, and to the uttermost parts of the world. God has called us to be a blessing to this world and to make the world a better place. We've been blessed to bless and to continue to be a blessing to this generation, we need to do three things. We need to stop slipping. We need to quit tripping. And we need to get to dripping. Stop slipping, quit tripping, and get to dripping. Let's look at stop slipping. Tell somebody, stop slipping. Stop slipping in the world. Stop slipping in the church. And stop slipping in the trench. You see, the world needs godly examples of a blessed life. Of a life set apart. We are in the world, but not of the world. I'm here, but I ain't hanging with them out there. Why? Because... This is where God has me. I'm going to stand here. We need to keep our testimony in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Be a blessing at your job. Be a blessing at your school. Be a blessing with your family. Be a blessing wherever you go. So we need to stop slipping in the church. I mean, we need to stop slipping also in the church. Excuse me. Stand tall in the church. We are his workmanship. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. We represent God. People get strength from our consistency. Stop slipping. Don't have one foot in church and the other on a banana peel. Stop slipping in the world. Stop slipping in the church. And stop slipping in the trench. The trench is the battle. We were born in the battle. This church is here because somebody fought for it to be here. When it comes to responsibility within the ministry, quit slipping. Tell someone, you can count on me in the trench. Not only do we need to stop slipping, we need to quit tripping. We need to quit tripping off affection, off correction, and off direction. Let's start at affection. Tell somebody, quit tripping. You say, 
Nobody loves me. Nobody understands me. Stop tripping. God loves you. And as a Christian, we are commanded to love you. How can we love God who we don't see and not love our brother that we do see? We have to love you. Quit tripping. Proverbs 18.24 says, He that has friends must show himself friendly. Amen. Nobody loves you. Why don't you talk? Amen. Invite somebody over for dinner. Have some fun. Amen. Go out. Do something. So we need to quit tripping off affection, and then we need to quit tripping off correction. Hello, some of you are tripping right now. Why are they correcting me? I'm a perfect person. No, you ain't. Amen. Newsflash. In the church, there's continual correction. Amen. I'm 64 years old almost, and I'm still getting corrected. Amen. Sometimes it hurts. Amen. 2 Timothy 3.16 through 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction. For instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. If you're not corrected, you're not complete. If you're not corrected, you're not thoroughly equipped. Hebrews 12, 11 says, Now no correction seems joyful in the present, but painful. Nevertheless, it afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Tell somebody, quit tripping. Let correction train you. So we quit tripping off affection, quit tripping off correction, and we also need to quit tripping off direction. Proverbs 20, 24 says, a man's steps are ordered by God. How can a man understand his own way? Psalms 32, verse 8 I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. That's what the Bible says, amen? There are no shortcuts in God. How many believe that? The long way is the short way. The short way is the long way. Why? Because shortcuts rob us of lessons. The road to the prize is more valuable than the prize. Quit tripping off direction. Amen. I, when, when they came and said Daisy was going to, uh, we, they were going to move the home and all that, I was like, I started tripping. <laughs> I did. I mean, I, I, mean I, I was at home. I couldn't even sleep. I was wondering why. But I, after a, a couple months, it went away. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why do they want to do that, man? We're doing good. <laughs> I, well, you know what? I just said, you know what? This is God's house. God, you're in control. And whatever, God, you're going to do. I'm not going to get in the way. You know what I mean? I, I had to slap myself a couple times. I didn't get in the slap line. Because pastor would have slapped me upside the head probably. But I, I didn't wake up. Amen. Stop slipping, quit tripping, and get to dripping. I'm going to call the worship team up. So I'm going to pray for some people. I'm going to take some time. I don't want to be late. They got to put down. As they come, dripping means that you got swag, right? Dripping means you're flossing. It's a slang term in this generation. Dripping. Amen. I seen a guy here a couple weeks ago. He was a, 
I said, boy, that boy dripping. He's splashing, boy. Got, boy, he was splashing, boy. I was like, man, he had chains on, everything matching, designer, all kinds of stuff. Said, boy, he's dripping. He was splashing, yeah. <laughs> You see, God created us to drip for him. Honey has a drip. The blood has a drip. And oil has a drip. Honey represents the promises of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, Jonathan tasted the honey and his countenance brightened. He got lit from the drip. God has promised us the land flowing with milk and honey. It's time to drip in his promise. Remember, the scripture that pastor gave us a couple years ago says in Acts 2.39, this promise is for you and for your children. And to all who are afar off, as the Lord will give, will call. I'm driven in honey. Wherever I go, I represent the promise of God. You represent the promise of God. You're driven in the promises of God. God is going to heal you. God is going to bless you. God is going to save your children. God is going to take you around the world. You're going to preach the gospel. Tell somebody I'm dripping. Not only do we need to drip in honey, the promise of God, but we need to drip in the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb represents forgiveness. forgiven by God sometimes I feel like I was the worst person that was ever around but the blood of the lamb covers me I remember a, a, a song that a lady uh, named uh, Crystal Lewis used to sing back in the 90s she talked about the book of life he said when they open up the book and they, they look for my name, they ain't going to be able to see it because it's covered in the blood of the Lamb. It was called Bloodstained Pages. I'm covered. I've been forgiven by God. God has forgiven me of my sins. <laughs> Hebrews 9.22 says, Without shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. God's blood is there to forgive you. We've been forgiven by the blood of the Lamb. We've been cleansed by His blood. We're dripping in His forgiveness. And lastly, this morning, we need to drip in oil. Oil represents the Spirit of God. It represents God's anointing. Psalms 133 says, it's like the precious oil upon the head that drips down the beard of Aaron running down the edge of his garments. Like the dew of Hermon, for there the Lord commands a blessing, life evermore. This scripture tells us that oil represents life. So when you're dripping in oil, you're dripping in life. And wherever you go, you bring life. I'm going to the store, I bring life. I'm going to the gym, I bring life. I'm going to work, I bring life. I bring hope to the hopeless. Because I'm dripping in oil. I got the oil of God upon me. 
It commands life. And when you're dripping in oil, wherever you go, your life screams out, live, 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 live. Come on, live, 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 live. Drip on me, Lord, so that I can be blessed to bless. Well, thanks for joining us here at Victory Outreach West Covina. We hope you enjoyed your time. Also, I want to encourage you to subscribe and click the notification bell. That way you get notified every time we go live. You won't miss a service. Stay connected with us. And you can also partner with us in your giving if you want to bless the ministry financially so we can continue the work that God is doing here. You can do that at any time. I hope you share it, and I hope you come visit us live real soon. God bless you.